Okay, yeah, now I'm recording the video. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for accepting it. Um, no, of course, of course. Uh -huh. um, my name is Sean. Um, I'm a junior in undergrad architecture at Rhode Island School of Design. Mm -hmm. And um, our school is not as passionate about, well, computational uh, um, architecture as mm -hmm. well, other schools, et cetera. You know, because it is a fine arts based school, yeah, yeah. Um, valuing traditional um, craftsmanship as well as social concerns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I had to sort of kind of find a path for me within or outside of school to um, learn more about algorithmic ar architecture as well as design and mm -hmm. et cetera. And I came across your videos. Um, oh on tutorial on um, grasshopper it was very accessible especially for korean or english speaking people mm -hmm. and um yeah and i finally <laughs> added you on linkedin and i asked you uh, yeah if I could have a coffee chat with you. yeah i mean i mean i'm very open to communicate with people like you particularly students or you know profession who are interested in learning computation design so i think this is kind of my um sort of uh, vocation and job. So I'm happy to <laughs> uh, interact with people um, in different you know, ways, like Zoom meeting or whatever. So yeah, I mean, because I'm also, while I'm communicating with people, students, I learn a lot. Because sometimes I need to, um, I mean, um, because, you know, think about it, I'm very highly specialized in uh, profession in one my area, right? So meaning that I'm maybe my perspective will become narrow too narrow maybe you know in a sense so i think um, in order to you know communicating you know teaching or you know uh, sharing the information i think understanding the audience is really important so yeah, i'm very happy to talk with you and i'm excited i mean because i'm that's why you know uh response to your uh, um um message in linkedin quickly yeah. <laughs> no problem no pressure just like uh your, your friends you can talk and can ask whatever you one or two, you know, ask me. Mm -hmm. Of course, thank you. I mean, speaking of, you mentioned that you, you're you afraid of, or you might be narrow in your realm or et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I remember you mentioning in one of your videos that there are similar traits amongst all 3D softwares. Mm -hmm. I think this was a, um, AR, like the advent of AR, VR architecture and people worrying about, you know, like following the trend, but you mentioned that philosophically, or not philosophically, but systematically all 3D software coding languages have their own, if you understand one, you can yeah. sort of access everything. Exactly. So the question was, as much as these tools provide us these potentials, do tools shape us as well mm -hmm. um, in the end? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think that was pretty much, like in your profession and experience, do you feel like sometimes the tools that you use, you don't shape them, but they shape you in a certain sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Because uh, uh, my understanding of your question is that basically we are designer, right? Designer some way and confined with the material and tool, right? So think about it, you have only concrete or some stones or plastic. <laughs> But that material actually uh, forces you to do some particular shape or particular way of cooking the you know, material. So in that sense, I think that the most important thing I believe is that um, understanding tool is important. So what I mean by that is the ranging from you know, possibility to limitation, um, as long as you understand what the tool stands for, then you can actually you know, take advantage of a tool or you can avoid over the tool. So I think it's the most important thing is that, you know, as a designer, uh, your thought process, like design process. So uh, the, the, um, the importance of the computation design I'm speak out on my channel is about basically translating human, you know, the uh, design process into the code. Or sometimes we need to, use the uh, current commercial software like Rhino, Adidas Max. And it has its own sort of um, you know, limitation and the you know, possibility. So yes, to answer your question, the tool actually you know, shape my design process or my, my thought for sure, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think that was a 
that was actually quite helpful in understanding um what tools can do actually i was i was quite wondering um uh, because you i'm pretty sure you predominantly use digital tools etc um i was wondering if you ever go back to the physical and sort of work with those or like do you just start from digital prototyping and i guess like it depends on each job but um it was it was an interesting experience for me because when i came in we start architecture in sophomore first year is called efs which mm -hmm. is when everyone has to do a foundation and fine arts work etc and we start in sophomore i after i discharged from the army um mm -hmm. i just they call it kunde busto, you know. What I mean? Okay. Okay. I just kept on digging grasshopper, and mm -hmm. then when I came back to RISD, um, my you professor is kind of. You, you did military service in Korea or in in United States? Oh, I did um in Korea. I'm a Korean oh. citizen. Um, I see. Yeah. Okay. Um and yeah, I just left straight after freshman year. My dad just. Signed it. <laughs> just uh, yeah. You have to um, die. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and my professor sort of, I guess it's because it's my first year starting architecture, but mm -hmm. my professor sort of tried to kind of push me away from Grasshopper or these algorithmic tools. Mm -hmm. Um, they were quite afraid that it's in terms of when with automation mm -hmm. you lose the intuitive skills apparently like lack of control mm -hmm. um so it was quite difficult to be in an environment where everything else you want to learn is not really um supported within RISD mm -hmm. um and I was perhaps wondering how much control can you have in these sort of um where everything we're doing is building a platform for a better design or et cetera. Like in terms of architectural building, where's the fine line between control and automation in your experience? Yeah, I mean, this is a very broadened question to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking, uh, where, where should I start? Um, okay. First of all, um, you started studying architecture architectural design in university. So, you know, paying back a lot of tuition and time. <laughs> yes. which I think uh, most important thing is that to follow the pedagogy, pedagogy of the um, S3 and the social uh, rigidity, right? I'm sorry. So the one thing I can tell you in this way is because uh, the school has their own philosophy and some strategy to educate their students. I think in that sense, uh, in order to maximize your time and um, your effort, I think to follow that direction is the top priority, I think. Yeah. But at the same time, um, the perspective that your professor mentioned is I'm kind of agree and disagree because uh, I feel like this is not a some you know um how can I say you know digital tool versus analog tool it, 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 it's not happen like this it's like a tool you know some people prefer uh taking um bus to go to other state for example or some people would like to take airplane or bicycle it depends on the distance and depends on your goal. So the, the reason I'm saying is because, you know, once you fully understand the digital tool, but the older guy has a lack of experience and lack of time to expose to that thing so that they're trying to analyze, they're trying to um, you know, understand on the basis of what they have, like as a buyer. So in that sense, um, I'm kind of um, experiencing two different worlds at the same time. I mean, uh, throughout my design um, history. So... I think um, you, if I were you, I definitely follow the direction of the school. But at the same time, I you, you need to keep your interest and your vision because the school so school's responsibility is to make the student like a 
uh, before graduate, you, you you guys need to be well around. Mm -hmm. So that oh yeah, rigid architects, architectural students, they are good because they are mid minimum qualification. Yeah, things like that. This is all all about the school's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Um, but after that, you know, meaning that the school doesn't care about your future. Yeah, <laughs> you need to find your own way. Absolutely. But at the same time, even if the very traditional and conventional and uh, uh, conservative school has a some you know professor who is very into new technology, you know, so I think it's very mixed feeling. I like I feel like. So, um, also you mentioned like the intuitive human thought process and automation. This is also a very controversial topic, I guess, because on my eyes it's basically identical. Yeah. In order to make them automate something, we need to you know think about how we make the process as an automatic process. Yeah. In this case, uh, if you have better design experience and better sort of sub process then you are able to make uh, the automatic process be become more meaningful. Yeah, I mean, as a designer, again, as a designer, we basically utilize the tool in a sense in order to, you know, um, you know utilize the tools successfully. Uh, if you understand, um, again, like a limitation and potential of the tool, then you can just uh, uh, mix or whatever. You can ac actually exclude some unnecessary tool many people want to use it, you know. So um, make a, your question uh, shorter. I think um, I follow the rigid the pedag pedagogy. Okay. At the same time, just keep your interest in and then see how the world goes, you know. Data become, most in, data become more and more important. And also the tool evolve a lot quicker. And why not? We are designer. We live in 20 one century come on we are not like you know uh old fashioned i mean there's an old fashioned tool i like i like to use old fashioned but why not why not we don't use the um you know the current uh the current cutting edge tool like you know state of art uh model or software things like that so as you use smart designer um i think uh, don't follow the tool just take advantage of the tool yeah, it depends on what you want to achieve, it, what you wanted to design as a designer. So I think this is the more important bottom line, I believe. Yeah. Is it right, Christian? Uh, right yeah, yeah. I, I think so. That's that's so important that um um your intention precedes the tools. Um additionally, additionally, once you have enough experience to uh, design in a conventional way, which is actually all about the way of thinking, I think, um, then you have a better position to understand the computation design or whatever cutting edge digital technology. But without this kind of experience, maybe you have just followed some tutorial of the grasshopper, for example. I think that that situation, the most, most of the professors don't want to put their students, I think. Yeah, and also I met a lot of students. They struggle to learn computation design, but I guess uh, it's not about the computation design. It's more about the lack of your design experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one very ha openly happens. So I think um, when considering your experience, you are so far more, right? So I think, um, yeah, just uh, right now, don't, don't be stressed out, yeah? Yep. Just follow whatever, studio whatever professor you pick on that particular you know studio drawing your uh a the, the journey in, in in the school and just follow try to learn you know from um out of the professor and students in the in the studio then at the same time you can just keep learning coding and grasshopper right now you don't need to uh, worry about making something special out of this kind of technology just mm -hmm. enjoy it yeah i think and then once you reach a certain amount of the experience, then actually uh, you automatically, yeah, naturally you can uh, mix two different um, um, thought process and implementation for your design. Yeah. When did that sort of happen for you? Um... Yeah, this is a good question. So actually my history was a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. So I started it from... Um, 
um, high school for my architectural design um, journey. Um, oh, wow. I went to my university. And then um, most of the people use the AutoCAD for 2D. And some of the people use the you know hand drawing, things like that. But I don't want to like, compete with them because you know, I'm 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 not interested in waste of my energy. I just want to push my <laughs> boundary. So I wanted to learn something not many pe people can do, like 3D at that time. Mm -hmm. So I utilize a lot of 3D graphics and 3D uh, mass uh, experimentation in my studio. And unfortunately, my professor was very very traditional guy. <laughs> Actually, asking NJ, did you come from computer science? You know, no, 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 no. I'm 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 architectural designer, and I'm, my background is starting from my high school. Then can you draw by you know a, a traditional way by hand drawing? Yes. Then most of my friends are actually using AutoCAD, not me. I just need to draw uh, hand drawing for my section and elevation uh, because of my professor. Anyway, I just follow that direction, but. I kept my passion and then things changed. Many people, you know, did some 3D um, AutoCAD and rendering and things like that. And then I realized that, okay, 3D is not no longer, you know, uh, become specialist, I think. Then I'm trying to learn like 3D animation and VR. At the time, the VR was also like first or second wave. Um, so I try to uh, utilize this kind of visualization tool for my design process because design process is all about like iteration, right? Design something, experiencing, and the modification and experience, this kind of the iteration process. So I, rather than, you know, draw something on the paper, I just actually directly build in the three-dimensional space. And uh, for sure, it has a pro, uh, uh, you know, the pros and cons. Um, but I trying to you know explore the possibility, and then um, my interest is shifted from the three D uh, model animation and simulation to the parametric designing, coding, and things like that. So I'm actually I'm I have no computer science background, but um, I'm very competent. Um, you know, migrating my design process into code. This is because. Um, I already experienced a lot of 3D tools like Rhino, 3ds Max, and Maya. And then also I have an experience um, how to you know, design from nothing, you know, because you have a site, for example, like I, I know how can I, you know, um, control the site mm -hmm. all the way to the building. You know, there's a lot of uh, strategy, you know, as a, as a student, we learn how to, you know, control the process, right? So it's nothing special. And then I learn code and then uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time to understand like basics of the you know, computer science. It's not about like, you know, easy, but I uh, just try to learn, you know, what is the variable, you know, for rule and basic syntax. Yeah. So, I mean, this is all about understanding language. So what, what I'm trying to say is that once you graduate, I'm for sure you have, um, all the language for the architectural design. You cannot yeah. articulate, but at least you know, you, know you, you can sense, right? How you develop your own design. And then somebody like try to ask you some question or you can actually answer all types of question because you, you did your design, right? Something like that. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that once I fully understand the computer science thought process, like in you know, a computation thinking, and then um, I'm trying to uh, combine my traditional design thought on the basis of the computer science philosophy. So that was pretty fun part. Um, and then, yeah, I'm keep pushing my boundary. And then I'm not going to, I, I didn't go to follow the uh, trend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm not interested in like uh, many students like it. Because I feel like it become pervasive and it become you know it's not easy to, it's not easy to get the competitive edge, you know, if you follow the the, the math, you know, math uh, the, the people crowd. So i um, my strategy is to really really focusing on to you know um 
create my concrete uniqueness. I think that one is kind of my survival kit. So just just a little spec to what you did. Mm. Yeah. Just keep thinking. What is what's your uh, uh, strengths? If you have the weakness, yeah, just forget about it. But just focusing on the strengths and then don't lose your past experience. You you, you need to keep your past experience mm. and then keep like um, develop and and. and Make your own world. You make your own castle. Can nobody can you know attack? Nobody can destroy. So I think um you are very beginning of the architectural journey. I think so. Within this kind of mental strategy, uh, you will have better um um you know position as time goes by for sure. I think. Yeah. Um. Thank you for those words. Um. Mm -hmm. Actually speaking, that's very interesting that you said that you don't have computation, I mean, com sci background. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I remember reading a uh, literature called Algorithmic Architecture. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there was like a case scenario where an architect and a software engineer, the team of architects and team of software engineers were given the same problem mm -hmm. and to solve. And the process was that architects focus more on iterative results as mm -hmm. well when um, software engineers were looking for the process of solving the problem. Mm -hmm. But now you kind of found a way to concise this mm -hmm. field together. Mm -hmm. um, and I sometimes realize that when you build a platform, what who do you think when you build a platform for like these tools like who who do you think of the audience like um the platform for like grasshopper or unity all these tools um that you build who are the like the audience i think i'm kind of phrasing it wrong um <laughs> um i guess that i guess what i'm trying to say is is the process sometimes underappreciated mm -hmm. compared to like these concrete results that mm -hmm. I mean, out of thousands of building prototypes that we can build with algorithms, mm -hmm. it's only gotta be one that's going to be built. Okay. So where does these thousands of other, you know, where do they go? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it depends on how you wanted to analyze your design. I guess, um, let me make an example. One of my friends asked me, NJ, you are very into uh, computation design. Could you tell me which building is done by that way? Mm -hmm. Then I'm trying to understand the question behind the scene. Um, so I actually asked another question to my friends. Could you tell me uh, which building is done by Rabbit, for example? Yeah, um, it's kind of nonsense to me. Um, the reason I'm saying is because uh, as a as a sort of position or like a like a, a problem, you know, um, let's say architect basically generate document, right, and then builder or construct. Uh, engineer, they actually uh, analyze the construction problem, or you know, the the constructor or general builder, they basically build actual building out of the document, right? So I mean, what I'm trying to say is that basically, computational designer, uh, as an output, they build process and make it as an algorithm, yeah. So it, it it depends on the how you uh see the problem, and also we can think about like architectural design, uh between um I mean starting from A to zero right uh, sorry sorry starting from because some some message is coming sorry so starting from A to Z right so we basically have an site and an idea right and then we can keep build and then we can get some iterative process sometimes we can just come back to the ideal you know, uh, phase to redesign your concept. 
But at the end of the day, the output gonna be as a building or what kind of a physical uh, tangible you know, outcome here. But during that process, we can actually narrow down or break down the process. And then you can sense like very particular problem, right? What is the, for example, like input or what was the output? You can actually uh, narrow down and break down the problem like this way. Then maybe in that sense, computational approach like a CS mentality can um, have a uh, much more benefit compared to the uh, architectural thought process. It 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 it, it totally depends on the, how you uh, what kind of tool. I mean, the thought process is become as a tool, right? So what kind of a tool or what kind of uh like an output you are uh, expect? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty like a mixed feeling. And I mean, the reason I'm you are asking is because you are still thinking like, you know, there is difference, different tool between traditional way and mm -hmm. like, like a binary condition, like a black and white thought. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm keep saying it's not about the black and white or not about the binary condition. It's more mm -hmm. about like the understanding problem uh, correctly and then utilize the tool efficiently and correctly. Way. I think that one is the uh, answer uh, broadly. I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so. It, yeah, it's, it totally depends on uh, the problem. And for example, like let's think about like urban design, right? Uh, for the urban design, basically they are not going to be build actual urban because it takes time, right? Basically, they uh, need to show some vision or some you know um, sort of uh, I don't know maybe some infrastructure or some like very high level policy or whatever in order to resolve their problem, right? For, for example, in that context, like gentrification has happened, you know, for example, and then it become like a very uh, uh, crowded, for example. This is kind of a question, right? So how can you resolve that question? Maybe some people like uh, utilize some, um, you know, cultural, you know, solution, or you can, physically install or some, um, you know, redesigned some infrastructure, it totally depends on the people. And it, even if you have the this kind of tangible goal, the way of uh, doing is actually can be different. So it's just, that's why I'm saying like, this is all about like the design process. Just don't think about like computation and other tool. Just as a human being, you know, we have a language, right, as a tool. So how can I, uh, articulate the problem. Yeah, I'm not saying the problem is going to be resolved from A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, just like a, uh, as a big journey, you can just narrow down. Sometimes we can, without any computer, we just, mm -hmm. just keep thinking, you know? Sometimes we can just, without thinking, just keep clicking mm -hmm. computer software, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm kind of guy. I'm not a like you know, technology become our um, become change our world. I'm not believe. I mean, again, the, this is the kind of tool. That's it. Yeah. Mm. This is my thought. I think I I, I may be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no, it actually definitely um, I think you pointed out something that I had internally, which is, you're right, I think I did segment mm. these tools as different breed when actually I kind of mm -hmm. lost power when I sort of doing that. Like I I think what you saying, it actually empowers the designer. If you say that it's the designer that chooses the tool mm -hmm. for appropriate situation, not exactly. the other way around. And and I, I think that was something that I really, it's obvious if you think about it, but I kind of forgot. And I think um, it's something while you're talking, actually, I was but I guess having it, a little it, epiphany. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, at, on your stage, uh, you don't need to, you don't need to like think too much about what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I recommend you to just explore everything, just enjoy. It. Yeah, just mm -hmm. play with the grasshopper, play with code download, you know, whatever, you know, algorithm, just tried it. And it can actually bring to uh, you, the, the, the output with, with your professor, then mm -hmm. you probably get a lot of criticism. Yeah, that's <laughs> accepted. Yeah, just keep yeah. it on. 
So while doing these kind of activity, I think you kind of understand like uh, what is the weakness and strength, and then you can basically mm -hmm. can have your own boundary, yeah, mm -hmm. based on your experience and feedback from other professions. Yeah, I mean, I'm very uh, positive to using the communication design. So my feedback is going to be really positive. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. There should be a lot of people who opposite me, yeah, for sure. So I think um, gathering this kind of uh, 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 information and data and maybe um, after 10 years, 20 years, the bias should be changed for sure. Um, so in that context, maybe the guy, I mean, students uh, in the future, they have a better you know, environment and better stage to learn because uh, many professions, they already used to use this kind of cutting edge technology. And for sure, I mean, my dream is that I need to learn code because I'm a designer. Mm -hmm. I really want to make sense uh, that sentence in the future. Yeah, because it's going to be our future for sure. Right now, you know, think about it. You're a designer, so that's why you can use Photoshop or AutoCAD. It makes a lot of sense. But think about it, like 20 years ago, when I started my, my architecture uh, journey, uh -oh. If you use the AutoCAD, then you you are not designer. <laughs> you are not designer. Yeah, people think about you. You are not. You are, you are, you are technician. Yeah. So this is the bias on that um um period. But right now it's kind of a mixed period right now. But after ten year, twenty year, well, you become like more profession. You 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 will be very active. So just. Your targeting is not right now. Your targeting is like uh, after 10 years or 20 years. Just take a look. Don't follow the, 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 the ball, the predict the direction of the ball. And then you can actually uh, predict the trajectory of the ball. Then you can just focus like a long rather than following the uh, ball itself. It's like a, um, you know, yeah. <laughs> actually, I remember um, you mentioning that we won't be, we're not actually competing with our peers or the seniors, yeah. but the future, like exactly someone 10 years or 15 years younger than me when I'm deep in the field. Yeah. Um, that's a daunting thought. <laughs> that's a scary, scary reality that seems to be more true, like truer each day. Um, but go, go ahead. Um, and actually, I guess like I'm not sort of, I think when I saw that video, I remember what you said was just kind of see them as opportunity, not as elimination of our career path or whatever. I mean, with the advent of mid journey, all these AI tools that are mm -hmm. happening, um, even my like peer friends are sort of scared or threatened. I can kind of sense um that you know when someone pushes a boundary the people who are like kind of used to a system are quite scared and and um with all these tools that are happening like what is the last layer of onion for us like um it's just something that I was thinking um every day because all these you know chat gpt all these things are happening and I'm just like while I'm a student and I'm just so like there's so much unpredictability in terms of the future. Mm -hmm. What's what's really um it's like sometimes it makes you wonder why like oh why we're learning these tools or et cetera when there's a machine that's like thousand times better in terms of not thousand times, but mm -hmm. mimicking these images. Mm -hmm. um, do you think about those things like um, in the future direction of design? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I I kind of understand what you try to say. Um, yeah. Um, for sure, no one actually predict. <laughs> no one predict our future for sure. Yeah, uh, but um, the important thing is that um, I mean the world is crazily faster and crazily like unpredictable, 
And yeah, as a profession, I also, I have a lot of sort of, I'm, I'm kind of exhausted to follow all these kind of, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but one thing I can tell you is that uh, the foundation is actually never changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. ever, ever. So um, there are different types of topic in your question. Um, the first of all, um, if you learn AI, and also you can take a look at the result of the AI, and then also you can compare with this kind of the um, things mm -hmm. with some professionals, uh, like a um, like for example, like Jeffrey Hilton, he's like one of the father of the AI. Also, you can uh, uh, listen his lecture, or you can also uh, take a look at uh, some feedback from the um, businessmen like Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. or, or you know, um, um, the, uh, the Elon Musk. I mean, based on their position, they have a little bit different types of the understanding and fear and, um, you know, the, the imagination, I think. Uh, but um, most of the AI we utilize uh, right now is actually heavily relying on the data. Yeah, heavily mm -hmm. relying on data. So I also... I had a workshop at GSD uh, for the, the AI things. And also I um, participated in some AI related um, something, you know, you know, studio, whatever things. Um, but I think the uh, most important thing is that data, to be honest. The, the model or network is there, yeah? What kind of the data we wanted to um, train the model for what kind of question, like what kind of a problem? I think the, the question become like, uh, again, uh, understanding problem, like design problem, whatever problem, and then collect and process the data that describe your problem. And then, you know, there's a lot of nice and very fine tuned uh, model and AI network. So then you can just take advantage. So what I'm trying to say is that still designer need to understand the problem correctly. I'm not talking about the GPT or, or again, or other very, very generic AI. Um, I'm talking about the AI as a tool for designer. So um, in that context, again, it's a little bit different approach, but the foundation is the same. Understanding problem and then narrow down problem, meaning that you probably um, understand what kind of data has a more insight, you know, with less knowledge, for example. It's, it's all about like the, the procedure and, and, and designing things. So I think right now, current approach, I think it's, it's nothing, nothing seriously um, um, sort of, um, you know, how can I say? Um, I mean, it, 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 it is just, glow itself so it's just different compared to the human human design capability i think just as a as a design tool we can uh actually you know what if you learn ai a little bit then you can understand what i'm trying to say like it's, it's more about like a program different types of programming yeah so i'm just wonder why people like conventional some program done by conventional way and there, there is another program by AI approach, then people put more emphasis or pe people can see the AI is way, way better than the traditional uh, software things. So think about it, like, come on, uh, Elon Musk like uh, shoot the rocket and then the rocket actually return on the, on the land, right? It's just crazy, right? So this is done by like, uh, I don't know, maybe they can use some portion of the machine learning AI model things like that for sure but most of the programming done by like plus or minus multiply divide like very simple algorithm so i actually write write this context on my book so think about it how creative you know the the, the, the software engineer based on very primitive computation they actually uh, shoot the rocket and then come back to look at uh, the, 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 on the ground this is a, it's not easy tasks so uh, I think uh, uh, on the business wise, uh, business wise, um, you know, the CEO, uh, many people like Elon Musk and you know Mark Zuckerberg, they actually 
kind of take advantage of the um, you know, imagination of the AI. But it, it, it partially, in a sense, it's, it's absolutely correct. But um, the way of the using is, I think, is very similar to what we have been done. Yeah. Think about the GPT chat. Yeah. So uh, actually, the other day, I talked with my friends about the GPT uh, uh, chat. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, but it's not different between uh, the GPT chat and a person who good at Googling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're basic, but the but in terms of the speed, GPT chat three is a way way better, right? But what I'm trying to say is that GPT chat is basically generate the uh, um sort of the answer out of the data mm -hmm. we inject, like week mm -hmm. week or some paper or whatever things, yeah. But you know, think about it. Um, without this kind of data, maybe we can create the GPT chat, GPT chat like model AI later. Then maybe it become actually more 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 problem. Just like Elon Musk said, like the AI become much more dangerous compared to the nuke, including bomb. So what I'm saying is that like whatever GPT chat three said, we can actually predict because we feed the data to them. So this is kind of the predictable, yeah. Same as the design, yeah. So, but just think about it, like without uh, any other uh, human beings uh, inject, because human beings generate the data. And then based on this data, actually we can train the model. So it is just a little bit different representation, like implementation. But um, I think um, maybe uh, next upcoming decade, we can have the, another, way of training the machine, then we can have a, I mean, this is a very tricky part. So I think it takes much more time to convey all my uh, sort of worry and yeah. opinion correctly Definitely. to you. It's kind of nonsense in within British okay. time because I was, I'm very into that 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 topic as, as well. Also I can uh, say um, something that I'm saying, which is opposite uh, way, in, in the opposite way I can say, but, um, yeah, just just come back to the design and practice that. Um, so I guess um, just think about this as a tool. Yeah. So you need to articulate as long as you can uh, clarify your problem and then set up your own process. And then during the inside of the process, you can actually use the AI or whatever tool. And the last one, uh, as an example, I heard that uh, one of my uh, students in, in, in the workshop, he said like, oh, in the studio, somebody bring some image to the professor in the, in the studio. And then uh, the, the professor asked uh, him, what is this? And then he said like, oh, uh, based on this keyword, I generate this image. Oh, AI generate this image? He said, yes. Then, then okay, so, so what, what do you want? I mean, what's your purpose? He's just mm -hmm. saying like, because because this is generated generated by AI, so mm -hmm. so it, it's it's gonna be good, but I don't think so. Why why we 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 are impressed by that image? This is my question. I mean, if you if you articulate the problem, if if you if you say like the um the advantage of the you know, in, 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 uh, implementation of the AI in your design process, if, if it is makes sense, then it become useful. It become acceptable to other people. But however, if you keep saying like, I don't know, this is just AI is generated and this, this is the, you know, done by some, you know, um, fancy, um, you know, fancy uh, uh, AI implementation, then I think it is meaningless. It's yeah. just AI giving up. That's, yeah, that's yeah. So again, in that context, the most important thing is that the foundation and thought process. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep saying technology could be getting evolved. So then the, the correct position of the designers to take a look and then think about what, what is our opportunity? And what is the fit file? What is the sort of the um, unknown potential? I think that, that stance is uh, important and at the same time, you don't need to worry about like the development of crazy AI things for the design, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, this is a very crazy topic. Um, <laughs> I hope I hope uh, my opinion helps you. Yeah. yeah, of course. I I mean, of mm. course, despite all these things, it mm. was just never really a fear. It's just um, it was just something on the back of my head. That was yep, pretty yep. much it. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I would. I mean, I don't know. I think you have. You also have precious time and. Um, I really want to talk to you more, but I also have to leave soon. But um, I guess I did, me um, being a junior, I, I guess I did hit a roadblock in terms of the tutorials or all mm. these things that mm. I have scoured, all the PDF collections or whatever. Um, but I guess from my perspective, where could I... And do you have do you have any recommendations for certain literature or certain um I guess your videos alone are actually really useful, but um any literature that you studied in the past or whatever that I could perhaps like look into and sort of kind of study on my own? Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean uh it fully depends on what you are interested in right now, I think. So um it's really hard to say <laughs> because I haven't oh, okay. heard about your uh, interest oh, right now. Yeah. But one thing I can tell you is that um, as an architectural student, uh, important thing is that de dealing with the studio, right? Yeah. yeah. From the understanding of site to yeah. you know build and creating some section and elevation and things like that. So let's let's think about this process like A to Z, right? So A to Z. Probably um, some some phase in design process you should rely on your intuition rather than computer software or something like that. But some some stage you need to take a look at data, right? In order to understand, you know, in order to analyze your design process, for example. So if you uh phase some particular design phase with data or some automation. I think I think the automation is always a good place to apply computation design for the beginner. Yeah. yeah. So um just focusing on your studio and then just you know open your eyes big and then just think about like what kind of opportunity is there. Then, uh, if you if you found something that are you that are you interested in, like using grasshopper automation or some data visualization or things like that, don't 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 use other crazy software. Just stick to the grasshopper because grasshopper is like very uh, designer friendly interface, and also that is actually learning on top of Rhino, which has all types of graphics and geometry computation. So in that sense, um. Just you can just download some examples from a website or just follow some not random tutorials. Just follow some uh, particular tutorial that potentially stick to your uh, design studio. Then just uh, you can just take advantage of it. Don't necessarily you know, mention, oh, I use this kind of algorithm you know, to the process. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Like a, uh, maybe it actually create another noise. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, I think that kind of approach is the uh one uh uh um one of the um easy way that I usually recommend for the studi uh, students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if, if you are interested in learning language, then I I recommend you using Python. Yeah. Also, Grasshopper uh, has a place to execute Python. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Iron Python. Um, so it didn't have um the APIs that it usually has on Python three. Um, oh, actually, you don't need to worry about. You don't need to worry about. So basically, the basic the uh procedure and way of creating algorithm is identical. Yeah, and also you mentioned API. You don't need to worry about the API of the uh, other software. You must understand API of the Rhino, yeah. So at the same time, at the same time, I guess you are familiar with using Rhino, right? 
Yeah. Meaning that you have a really, really good position to understand the Lino API because Lino Python API is nothing special. It's just kind of a wrapper of the icon on Lino. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, from my experience, this is the easy and fun way to learn uh, sort of computation design for the uh, beginner or architecture students. Yeah. Um, is it okay if I, um, uh, well, well, I was mm -hmm. wondering if I could show you some of the scripts, <laughs> but um, um, yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Uh, I guess that could be another day. Um, cause uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, actually, that's. I did have some questions because mm -hmm. um, this was my. I'm sorry, I'm usually not this nervous, but <laughs> no problem. I'll take the time, please. Yeah. I like your passion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um Is it okay if I could uh, share the screen? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. you can. This was actually, mm -hmm. I think in terms of like the purpose that you mentioned, I remember when I was um, doing a laser cutter, I was wondering, mm -hmm. um, is there any tool that efficiently lays out all my cuts onto a panel? And I was trying to develop them, but I realized that there is there's already tools like that on um food for Rhino. Mm -hmm. But it was a, it was actually but because I was I was so are you your screen? pardon? Are you sharing your screen? Oh. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. I can see your um screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um oh, this is not it. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was I guess my question is that I'm inefficient. I was like um so the assignment was just eight by eleven inches. We're <laughs> building a footprint and I wanted to sort of um unfortunately I realized that trying to automate fabrication itself took a lot more work than design and <laughs> um so like for example mm -hmm. if, oh that's it's a lot of, for example if i wanted to mm -hmm. access Mm. just these surfaces I was so I was wondering how do I just select the large cuts that I want to have and sort of lay them out onto a laser cutter as mm. in a most like material friendly Got way it. possible but these were all just I realized that hold on I'm not automating anything I'm just kind of doing on doing rhino mm. on a grasshopper interface Got it. yeah and that's the that's the roadblock that I felt when I realized that um, okay. it's kind of going against the very nature of what I was trying to learn. Um, so, 
Yeah, you know what? Actually, if you uh, decompose any algorithm out there, that algorithm actually is nothing special. Yeah, just like you did. But we, what we can see is just the input result. That's it. That's why we cannot see the complexity or some crazy computation behind the algorithm. So I think that you are on the right track. Yeah. And also, while you creating this kind of complex graph of a component, you kind of um, um, you know ex exposed to that kind of the uh, procedural um, thought process. Yeah, I think. So one thing I can tell you by looking at this crazy <laughs> graph of the, you can uh, because think about it like individual component has their particular job, right? So maybe you can merge two or three into one component by Python. Mm -hmm. Also, basically you can modulize the Python. And then if you modulize the Python, the mean meaning that you can also um, like generalize the component so that you can use here and there or other other project and things like that. It's like a creating your own sort of library, which is kind of your worker in your company. Yeah, for example. So um, again, not doing, uh, um, trying to resolve um, crazy complex problem, just starting from the simple problem and like a simple extrusion, for example, like, you know, in that situation, I want to extrude that amount of the um, thickness, for example, in that, situation in that condition i don't want yeah so i want to apply another sort of a module for example so i mean if you have a time just take a look at what is the computation design thinking most important thing is computation design i'm sorry mm -hmm. computation thinking so the principle of computation thinking is basically understand problems correctly and then decompose the problem and then you can also abstract the problem so meaning that you can lead of all the noise and then just remain the 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 essence of the the, the tasks, and then you can actually break down, modulize, and then you can uh, now uh, make some procedure based on the condition. So this is actually what you did. Yeah, I can articulate if you zoom out this algorithm, everything. So this is all about like the uh, uh, computation thinking implementation basically. So. Um, I mean, I used to uh, create that kind of algorithm before. Um, but most of them is basically uh, translating the manual uh, operation into the code. But mm -hmm. and, uh, and also one thing you asked me is that, which is very, very crazy problem. Like for example, how we, um, you know, position the, comp uh, the, 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 how can I say, the component on the sheet in order to reduce the um, sort of the, the, the waste of the material, right? Um, that one is for sure is crazy complex problem. Uh, <laughs> if you resolve it, then you're gonna make a lot of impact for the, I mean, there should be some algorithm, but, but um, there's also a way to resolve the algorithm uh, if you are searching, like think about like a Tetris, you know? We have a given mm. area. We need to put the whatever cutting uh, cutting uh, object uh, in in the in the in, in onto the sheet, right? Yeah, I was actually thinking about using kangaroo physics to sort of merge it onto a surface so that they could just fall and mm. kind of. I guess it won't. It's more complex to be honest. We, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, <laughs> not, not about the position, but about the rotation. Rotation, yes. yes. Everything is like interconnected, so. Maybe in this case, uh, you can do uh, some novel uh, strategy to put the uh, object on the sheet, and then you can make a, a lot of iteration, like thousand of thousand iteration, and then you can get the like a best, um, you know, the result out of it. Like this is the one of the optimization things. Uh, anyway, yeah, there are many many things uh, in, in in terms of the technical aspect of it. Um, yeah, but I think you have good good. You are on the good way, yeah. Just <laughs> pushing yourself, and then I mean, important things: the question and curiosity. Yeah, just don't lose lose them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the these kind of uh, activities should be uh, connected to your design. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> don't don't <laughs> lose that kind of uh, connect connectivity. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, no problem. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your time. I mm -hmm. I hope to well because my I my dream grad school is to go to Media Lab or oh, GSC as well and. Um, I hope I could see you someday in Boston area. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if you have any question, uh, not only for the the computation design, but also like you know, your future like master program or your professor. Of course, of course. We can we can share our uh, knowledge and thought. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I I just really wanted to, like you said, push my own boundary in terms of design practice and. Exactly. Yeah. Um, be my own designer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No problem. And just let me know. Um, if you wanted to uh talk and have of course, of course. I I'm just really happy uh that um you took this call and uh. No problem. Uh, okay. Thank you. Also, I, I I record it. I I'm gonna upload on my YouTube, so then you oh, can of course. <laughs> just, uh, 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 watch this video over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the beauty of the record, you know. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Namju. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.